Hi, and good afternoon. Welcome to a webinar from Lean Shopping University. Today, we are going to learn more about applied ethics and our master's program in applied ethics. I'm here with two guests, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Would you like to start, Joran? Yes. My name is Joran Kolste. Uh, I'm a professor of applied ethics, and uh, once upon a time, that is about 25 years ago, I was the found, founder of this program that we will talk about today. Thank you. And Paula? Yes, hello everybody. I'm Paula. I'm a master's student currently in the program of applied ethics. I've just started in August and I'm here to share my experience about it. And yeah. <laughs> Great, thank you, thank you. Uh, before uh, we hear more from, from, from the two of you, I would just like to mention a few things. Um, you can ask us questions. Um, we, will, we will spend about 25 minutes or so uh, discussing the program. Uh, you can put your questions throughout, but we will not answer them until the end. Um, as I mentioned, the webinar is being recorded, um, so you can view it again uh, at a later date. And we will have a Q&A uh, session at the end, um, well, the majority of the time, almost. Great. Um, let's let's move move on to the to the actual subject. Um, what is applied ethics, and, and and why do we why do we why did you want to start a program in applied ethics twenty five years ago, Yara? Well, applied ethics is something which is concerns all of us. Uh, think of Glasgow. Should the developed nations support the poor nations in their effort to become fossil free? Perhaps they have an obligation to do that. Should United Nations intervene military to stop the civil war in Ethiopia? Should Corona vaccination become mandatory? Is it right that Facebook collect users' personal information and sell it to companies and states? All the time we face moral questions, ethical questions. Uh, and the point with this program is that we want to system in a systematic way try to analyze these questions. We, we face them both as individuals, what are our own responsibilities, and also as a society or as a nation. Let me just quickly uh, say something about the curriculum of the program so we can see how it is structured. Uh, it covers different fields. Uh, and uh, the fields of applied ethics. So you can see there is a course on, on uh, uh, social and political ethics, a course on globalization and global justice, one course on ethics and migration. It starts up with an uh, introductory course on ethical theory and moral practice. So everyone taking the course or the program can have on the, be on the same, 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 same starting ground, so to say. And then in the second semester, uh, you continue with business ethics, one course in biomedical ethics, and the last part, uh, second part of the semester, the students can write a master thesis, which then well, they can go deeper in their own special interest in applied ethics. Thank you. Um, I'd like to go back to the to the first semester slide in, in a minute. Um, and, and Paula, um, I'd just like to hear more about why why you chose this this subject, and then I'd, I'd like to hear your perspective on the the, the courses you've taken so far. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'd love to share. Um, so I've decided to take this program or start this program, apply for this. Really has to do with what Joran just said. It, like ethics is in everything. It concerns everything that we do. And I always felt when I was you know, listening to the news and um, trying to stay up to date with everything. I always felt this frustration that I felt like we couldn't get behind the right values together as a society. And um, I feel like this program, or I'm hoping that this program will enable me to build a strong argument for why we should act in a certain way. And um, that was really what made me interested in this program. And yeah, my experience so far has been really, really positive. So um, this first course that we had in ethical theory and moral practice, that was a great start to bring us all onto one level because there are so many ethical theories out there. Um, and it was really important just to get us all on the same starting point because we all come from very different backgrounds. Um, I myself have done a liberal arts degree in my bachelor's program. So I was free to experience or 
take a lot of different subjects across all disciplines. And I love that applied ethics allows me to stay across disciplines that I get to um, look into biomedical ethics, but also business ethics and then global justice. So that I'm not asked to choose, but that I'm encouraged to um, see how all of these ethical theories try to answer problems or give answers to problems across all disciplines. So yeah. So what what background do your do your classmates have? I mean, is it is are oh. most of them from a, from a liberal arts background, or is it varied? Oh, it's very varied, um, and I think that is also one of my favorite things. So we have some coming from um, a medical background, from law, um, from psychology, and also um, just a minority. I think one or two students with a background in philosophy. So it is not required that we have this background in philosophy, but it is even encouraged to have a different background so that we can bring in this practical experience because after all, it's applied ethics and not just ethics. Um, so yeah, we come from all different kinds of backgrounds. How has uh, how has this impacted the the program, Yaran? The, the fact that it is, I mean, it it is in fact our most uh, kind of not, I wouldn't say welcoming, but in a way welcoming program that we offer a master's level, as it is open to so many uh, different backgrounds. And how has it shaped the program? Well, I think it's shaped the program all 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 through the program because you engage in discussions with people or students that have various backgrounds, most both disciplinary, disciplinary backgrounds have, as we heard, different different uh, uh, educational backgrounds, but also coming from different parts of the world, because this has been really an international program all, 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 all along. Um, but it, I mean, it, to do applied ethics, you need competence both in ethics and philosophy, or ethical analysis and so ethical theory, which uh, Paula just mentioned, but you also need some knowledge about the certain fields that you are studying, for example, business or medicine or politics. So, I mean, that's, that's what is so interesting, I think, with the program that it works in this way that the students' competences complement each other and the teachers who take, give the courses are experts on their specific fields. So this, I think, makes a very nice, nice solution to, to offer this program in the way. And then the students at the end, as I said, have the possibility to specialize in the specific field of interest that the students have. Mm -hmm. So somebody with, for example, a law background can choose to do their, their thesis on ethics, applied ethics within law, and someone with a medical background can choose to do it in a medical setting. Exactly. Okay. Well, so it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely a, a, a variety. Um, so, the target student in, in terms of, of, well, academic background, it's, it's very broad, but what do we think in terms of mindset or personal skills? I mean, who, who would, would kind of get the most out of this program? Um, I think I'm going to put that question to Joran first, and then I'd like uh, your input as well, Paula. Yeah, I, uh, it's, it's a very good question because it's, uh, we, of, from the beginning, we uh, emphasize that you should have an open mind. So even show a very nice piece of glass from uh, Småland, south of uh, Linköping, where you have a glass called open minds. Uh, this means that you will probably not be very happy if you have a very definite doctrinal view on, on because in applied ethics, I mean, everything is open for discussion. And as well as you are interested and have your own views, you also learn to understand the other parts' arguments and uh, how you can. So, so it's it makes it more bit difficult, what I can say, to also uh, to get a very very clear view on a, or a very definite view on a special issue. But you can find out that there are so many arguments and often good arguments on both sides in the debate. But of course, you will also develop because you are usually an engaged student because the students are very engaged in this problem, as just Paula said. Uh, you want to know the what is right and what is wrong, so to say. That, that's a kind of basic drive for students in this, pro in this program. Mm. So open-minded, and, and what in terms of, of kind of English? I mean, is there a lot of writing, a lot of presentations? I mean, or how do you, what, what kind of, are you looking for somebody who's used to writing, you know, essays a lot? Would that would that make it easier? 
Yes, I mean all the courses are are, are, grad, are graded or examined in the way that you have to write a thesis or a sh short paper. Uh, so you you should have skill in writing, and of course it's very important that you have a good skills in in English language. Yeah, a high level. So we have IELTS six point five, and but but that's you know it's not there just to kind of catch people out. It is there to actually make sure that that people can can make the most out of this program. Uh, Paula, what has your been experience? I mean, what what have you felt were the the skills that that have been necessary to 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 kind of fly through this program <laughs> i think it's definitely the open-mindedness that joran just mentioned as well um you have to be interested in having your assumptions challenged as well and your biases because you will get called out if like your argument is not sound if you have made an assumption that cannot that does not hold if you come from a different background, for example. So I think you have to be open-minded and be ready to have your worldview also questions to a certain point and to engage with new topics. Um, we discussed so many things that you might not, have, might not have thought about before. Like we've talked about recreational drugs, we've talked about cognitive enhancement, about gambling, and then also a little bit about abortion. And all of these, of course, are also emotional topics. And I think, um, yeah, you have to be ready for the challenge um, mm. kind of, and I would also, emphasize that writing is one part, but we also have to do a lot of reading. Um, so, and yeah, you have to be ready to read a lot and enjoy uh, engaging with difficult and dense arguments um, at times. And I think, yeah, good English definitely helps um, because it makes reading also easier. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, to be able to 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 read what I can imagine is, is sometimes complicated texts in, a, in, in English, uh, when it's not always your first language uh, does require um, significant skill. Um, thank you. What about the, the, the workload and the, the schedule? Um, Paula, what is a, what is an average day? I mean, is there an average day? Do you start at eight and go home at five or what does it look like? Um, I don't have like an average day yet um, because we always have one course at a time. Um, so I'm used to having five courses at the same time at my home university. So when I first learned that we will only have one course at a time and we'll focus just on for example, the first course, ethical theory and moral practice, I thought like, oh, this is going to be so chill. This will be so easy. Um, I will have so much free time, but it actually is the most work I've done for university um, <laughs> so far. <laughs> it really is a full-time study program. Um, and I think that is really important to keep in mind. So I might have only classes three times a week or something, a lecture and seminars. Um, those are always, you know, you have a few lectures and then there's also a seminar where you where the focus is really just on discussing the subject material um, on a specific topic. Um, so you might have classes only three days a week, but um, I'm busy five days a week just um, reading and I'm free to structure that time myself. So I either go to the student visit, which you see in the background here, mm -hmm. or I go to a cafe or I just stay in bed with my laptop to get the reading done. Mm. So that varies a lot. So is a, is a lot of the... the um, um the reading that you do, is it available online? Yes, um, a lot of the reading is made available by teachers, but you also um, have to find a way to get your hands on it yourself. Um, also, the library has um, course literature is accessible, um, so you, you find a way to get the literature. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and the, the expectations on students, it, it is to, to focus and, 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 and spend 40 hours a week full-time job uh pretty much being being a student um is that is that your i mean that that is is the kind of aim isn't it of course yes that's that's what we as teachers expect from the students and and i i think if you don't uh, plan to study full-time i think you should choose another program because this is what is expected from you and if you want to leave the program with a good grades and, and so and have a possibility to use it in the future I think that must be the you plan for full-time studies yeah which leaves uh -huh. quite a lim limited um, space and time for part-time work which is again I have to say you know rather difficult to, to, to find in, in, in Sweden anyway well at the same uh, time perhaps I can say that uh, Linköping, uh, the students also like to be in Linköping and they like because there's a lot of things happening for students. Paula knows more about that than I, but I think that's experienced during the years that, and not least the group of applied ethics students 
usually become a very tight and uh, group with a lot of things happening, for example, in the weekends. So it's not only studying seven so, days so a week. Actually, yeah, you just did me a favor. That was my actually next topic that I was uh, going to bring up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, you read my mind, all my notes. Sorry. Um, yeah, that's, no, that's good. It's good. Uh, it's, it's a smooth transition. Um, Paula, um, yeah, tell, tell us more. What, what is, uh, you know, daily life, friends, activities, um, accommodation? What's it like being a student? I think it always depends on what you want it to be. Um, so for myself, I live in a shared accommodation um, and I, yeah, you can go out definitely and then shipping on the weekends. Um, there's a very vibrant student culture, which surprised me um, coming to Sweden. And also my first ex first days in Sweden, they were very quiet. Um, it's a very quiet country um, for the most part, but then you walked on campus and you had those groups of students running around in overalls, all like color coordinated and you had spontaneous break or break break dance sessions, not break dance sessions, but just like dances or choirs just spontaneously forming on campus. And that was very confusing for me at first. Um, and that was definitely a thing. You have a very active and lively student student life as well, um, where you can go out together in groups and um, the ESN, um, so the Erasmus Student Network and the International Students Association, they also offer a lot of activities um, to help especially international students to find new friends, um, to get to know the area. And yeah, it really depends on what you want your student life to be. And I think land shipping offers everything that any other student city offers as well. Mm. Yeah, I think you're, yeah. I think it's it's a very I think there's I mean the, the university has um, well over twenty thousand students. I think it's twenty seven or twenty eight um, full time equivalent. So you know there's a lot of students in this town because the town only only has about one hundred and fifty thousand. So there's a lot of student mm -hmm. activities going on. But I also hear a lot of students take advantage of the the nature uh, around mm -hmm. us because um, there's a lot a lot to do. So you kind of get the best of, of two worlds there. Um, I'm just wondering, Yaran, from your experience, what, what do what do your students? Where do they end up after after having done this program? Uh, that's of course a little different. Uh, I can just tell a personal story, of saying something, answering this uh, question. Because two years ago, I went to the Philippines for a conference uh, in the southern Philippines and met three former master students who now worked as teachers at the universities in Cebu and in Davao in the Philippines. So I think that says something about the program that we have students now working as teachers in, in ethics, philosophy, applied ethics in different parts of the world, all over the world, in fact. Um, so that's one thing, one, one, one way to go for students. Uh, the other way is to use this program as an additional education for example a doctor a nurse teacher where they can then use it for the profession in their professional life and be the expert in this field where they happen to come in the in the work workplace where they where they where they go so i think these are the basic two ways forward for students uh, our students in in applied ethics mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and paula what, what would you like to do uh, once you graduate, and, and your your thesis, what would you like to write that in? Oh, uh, those are the big questions, and <laughs> I don't have great answers to those yet. Um, I also don't know yet what I would like to write my um, my thesis about. I haven't talked to my um, to potential supervisors yet, but I could also see myself um, pursuing a PhD after this program. Um, but I would like to emphasize that this is not the only route, and I think this program teaches you so much more that is like abilities that are useful in all kinds of fields. For example, um, this interdisciplinarity that we have among the students is really um, encourages you to build arguments that are make sense to everybody. For example, I have studied cultural studies, but it doesn't really say much to people if I start referencing Foucault or Bourdieu, for example. So I will have to learn to make my arguments in a language that resonates with everybody. And I think that is just an ability that can be useful in so many fields. I could also think about politics or um, like these areas or journalism, when you really have to start to communicate really complex issues in a simpler language. Um, so I think that is yeah, something really yeah. interesting. 
I can imagine that is is one of the great advantages to to having this kind of program with such a broad intake of of not just sticking to people with the background in philosophy. So that's uh, I think that's that's brilliant. And um, what about um, being a student? Sorry, being being a student in Sweden. Uh, what's what's that? What's the difference? I mean, did you do your bachelor in Germany? Um, yes, I did my bachelor in in Germany, but also. Um, for a while in Estonia as an Erasmus mm -hmm. student. Um, and I think Sweden, it just has a really good reputation for their education, educational system. Um, that's also why I chose um, to come to Sweden for my for my master's program. And so far that has really, really been true. Um, so I think we've had, we have great teachers that really care about making it a good experience for us students as well. Um, so they really seem passionate about teaching and passionate about the subject matter and I think that is really great and they encourage us to voice our opinions and to start in start a debate a discussion and um, yeah it is really on one one level I feel like um, so they value our arguments just as much as they would argue their colleagues um, arguments for example and I think that is a really really great experience and that is pretty unique to um, the study like the experiences I've made at university so far. Mm. I think Sweden as a society is, is quite, is a flat structure, you know, there, there isn't much hierarchy. Um, I'm thinking, before we move on to the questions um, from, from our, our audience, um, what do you wish you had known, Pamela, before you applied? Is there anything you think, it could be anything from accommodation to thesis planning to getting your personal number to I should have read up on this, is there anything, any tips you have? Well, the personal number is uh, something important you mentioned because I was not aware um, how useful it could be or would be and how many services you need a personal number. Um, but it does seem quite tricky to get one. Um, so you too know obviously a lot more about the personal number, but it helps you like if you do want to get a small job or do something small on the side, you need a personal number for all kinds of services. You need it to open a bank account. And if you have to pay rent, you get fees if you pay from an international bank account. Um, so there are those practical issues and also it helps you to get medical care, if I understood that correctly. Um, if you have the personal number, it just makes a lot of processes much easier and much faster. Um, so that is something that I could have looked into a little bit more before <laughs> I came here. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, yeah, just the workload, which we had mentioned, because I had been thinking that I would like to work you know, on the side a little bit at least, um, but I have abandoned that plan for now. And yeah, I think that's just good to know, good to keep in mind. Yeah, yeah. Um, thanks. And and your yeah, some, some final words from you. You know, tips. What what would you have as your your kind of top tips? Is it is it you know along the veins of of Paula workload? Anything reading should be done or or anything? Yeah, be 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 uh, curious of listening to other person's views on this very important issues that we that we take up in in the different courses open-minded and also be prepared to yeah read text but that's uh, something that you uh, we have already men mentioned um and to uh, yeah so so that will be my my final word be able to work, be prepared prepared to work but also open-minded Mm. So make make sure you you lose all sense of kind of pride or I have to be right. So just kind of you know take in what others are saying and 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 be willing to to change, I suppose in a way, mm. um, your your previous point of view. Um, thank you. Um, we'll we'll get back to some of these these areas, but I thought we should open up for questions. Um, I see that we have a bunch of questions in our in our question section. Um, before we talk to before we do that um usually we only put this part of the webinar on the web which means we we tend to say goodbye to the to the people who are watching this recording at this stage um so i just would like to say that the quickest way uh, to get in touch with with the university is if you've already had an email from us to hit reply on that alternatively put a question in the question section here um in the webinar and that will be forwarded to us um quickly 
Also have a look at our Facebook and our Instagram. Uh, we have a group of student ambassadors who, who run our Instagram. So every week there's a new student um, showing you life here, um, their experience of, of studying at Leadership Universities, different programs. Um, and also we have a blog, International Program Students at LIU very long name um, have a look there again the students are, are telling you giving you these tips such as you know um, uh, how to structure your your workload or how to get a personal number and and bank and and also podcasts so have a look at those areas um, and thank you for watching the recording uh